What you are about to see are true stories of children who are redefining bravery and courage. Stories that could change the way you look at life. The scariest thing about having cancer is knowing you're going to choose the path of life or death. A brain tumor, my God, that sounds so devastating. Right now, Bryce needs a heart transplant. She's in heart failure. She's very blue. My biggest fear is that uh, she's not going to make it through the, the surgery. That's my biggest fear. I knew something was horribly wrong. It is the worst diagnosis as a parent that you can be given. We were determined to fight. I think what was remarkable about Alexi was the amount of tumor that she had a diagnosis. At that point, I really honestly thought that was it. We would lose her. A nurse came and held my hand and said, I promise you, you will get through this alive. All the children you're about to meet have something in common. They're all facing enormous challenges, some fighting the fight of their lives. And to us, they're all heroes. I'm Paul Gross, here at Canada's Hospital for Sick Children. And in the next 60 minutes, you're going to learn what it takes to keep going when you're a really sick child. Join me and Cynthia Dale, Amy Skye, Marilyn Dennis, and Lisa Ray. The families you're about to meet know the road won't be easy, but they know they've come to the right place. So please, stay with us. You won't want to miss this special TV broadcast. Watch, and you'll see what I mean. Here's Amy Skye with our first unforgettable story. Day-to-day -day life for a busy family with a five-year-old boy, a three-year-old girl, and a newborn baby is anything but dull. Sleepless for mum, perhaps, but also happy, full of life and tons of tiny laughter. It was like that for Carole, until her three-year-old daughter, Alexi, got a stomach ache and their trip to the local hospital changed day-to-day -day life forever. No sick kids, like most mums, know their own home. She should. She's lived here for the past year with her daughter, Alexi. You see, Alexi didn't go home from their local hospital that day because she had a lot more than a stomach ache. She has cancer. Ever since, Carole has been on a desperate mission. And what seems like the longest journey of her life. I don't think I'm ready for that. It's not dance yet. Alexi, you want dance in my band? You know, they say heroes come in all shapes and sizes. Alexi's always been a tough, a tough cookie. Um, even when uh, we came to name her, we were looking through names in a book, and in the womb, <laughs> she was one of those that, you know, there are kids, you put babies, you put the hand and they stop moving for half an hour. She would actually hit harder for the person to remove their hands. So um, when I saw the name that Alexi meant fighter, which is weird because I'm talking about it that now, and it's a, it couldn't have been a more appropriate name. Little did we know, though, back then. Four years ago, beautiful and bright little Alexi came into the world. She was born to proud parents Carole and Hélène and big brother Simon. Alexi would grow up in a home full of love and happiness in Wawa, a small town in northern Ontario. It wasn't long before Carole and Hélène decided to once again expand their perfect family. Another baby girl was born, this time named Margaret. But the euphoria they all felt about the new baby 
was short-lived. When Margaret was just five weeks old, Alexei's stomach began to swell and hurt very, very badly. Hurt in a way that no child should ever know. Doctors immediately transferred Alexei to the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto. Carole, with the brand new baby to care for, had to stand by and watch helplessly as Alain and Alexei were rushed off in an air ambulance. It was a horrible moment that Carole will never forget. Of course, there's the feelings of fear and anxiety and complete desperation. It was difficult because having the baby, um, I would have had to have left her behind. So I, I couldn't. I couldn't go with her. My husband did. So it was difficult to see the elevator doors close as they left for the ambulance, for the airplane. As I picked up Margaret and I had to drive. At SickKids, it was determined that Alexei's abdomen was riddled with cancer. The disease was aggressive and her case severe. Carole and the kids packed up and made the way to Toronto as fast as possible. She has a kind of cancer called rhabdomyosarcoma, which is just a long to describe a cancer that comes from the muscle cells. I think what was remarkable about Alexei was the amount of tumor that she had at diagnosis. Essentially, every structure in the abdomen either had tumor involving it or pushing against it, and so using our scans, we weren't able to tell where it arose from. Alexei immediately began a program of chemotherapy that would last for 42 long weeks. It's a harsh treatment, but it was the only choice. Strong and brave, Alexei endured a degree of pain and sickness that most people couldn't imagine. It's a special little girl who can lose all her hair and trade a merry-go-round for an IV pole on wheels and still find the resolve to smile. Uh, Alexis, uh, hair loss didn't seem to bother her really much. I think it bothered me more than her, and not because of the hair and the vanity, more because of it was concrete. As her hair was falling out, this is happening. This is true. And that's why I thought it was difficult because hair is hair and it'll grow back. But it was the fact that my daughter has cancer. But no one could have foretold all that they would have to go through to keep Alexei alive. It would be the fight of their lives, the fight for Alexei's very existence. Later, the dramatic continuation of Alexei's fight for her life. It's amazing, isn't it? The strength of children like these. They're small and innocent, but they find a way to fight the deadliest diseases with a kind of dignity and determination you just don't see every day. And when you watch these stories, and there are many more to come, it's hard not to reflect on the value of life, to feel grateful, and to be inspired by the heroism of the children, but also their parents, and the doctors, nurses, researchers, and everyone else at Sick Kids. Together, they rally around the children from the moment they're admitted. So don't go away, because we have more amazing stories coming right up. Like this amazing little boy who's determined to beat all the odds as he fights the biggest battle of his life. And a little girl whose life and death has inspired us to care even more. I'm Marilyn Dennis. A story about a little girl who's been through more in the first two years of her life than most people go through in a lifetime. And it's coming up. But first, here's a good friend of Sick Kids with our next story.
Have you ever wondered how you'd feel if you found out you had cancer? How it would change your life forever? Or how you'd deal with it? Now imagine if you're a seven-year-old and you just found out. How would you deal with it then? My name is Julian and I had medulloblastoma, which is a brain tumor. I was just feeling really sick and my head was spinning and I didn't go to school for a couple days. I started throwing up with everything I ate and I thought I just had the flu. It was in the winter months of 2003. Uh, he had flu-like symptoms. From then there were other physical changes that I noticed. Uh, his eyes seemed to be drawn in towards his nose a little. Maybe a bit of a walking with a gait every so often when he was tired. So we kept going back to the doctor and going back to his pediatrician. She was just great. She would be a good listener and say, well, let's try this. And uh, finally, you know, I guess mother's intuition just, uh, I just thought one day, you know what, can we have a CAT scan? The night before we went for the test, the CAT scan, he was at that point walking with his head tilted, and I said, Julian, now, why are you doing that? And he said, because there's less pressure in my head when I do that. And at that point, I just took a breath, and a chill just came over me. And I remember going to sleep that night saying to my husband, I have a bad feeling about this one, Jeff. Julian was diagnosed with a medulloblastoma. Medulloblastoma are one of the most malignant and most common malignant brain tumors in childhood. And by the time he was um, admitted to the hospital, it was quite obvious that he suffered from a brain tumor needing and necessitating um, urgent intervention. If you do not help to remove brain pressure, um, this can result even in death. Hearing cancer was devastating. Yep, it is. That's a lot to take. Actually, at the time, he was seven. Seven-year-old, you have to tell them that he may not make it. That's hard. The scariest thing about having cancer is knowing if you're going to choose the path of life or death. I, I didn't make a choice. I just prayed to God that I chose the, the path of life. I didn't know what I was going to face. A brain tumor. My God, that sounds so, so devastating. It's like having somebody put fire on your back and leave it there and to take and when they t just uh, put the fire out there's still going to be a lot of marks of remembering what happened and it was it was again that feeling of the floor falling beneath you. It's everything that you know is safe is no longer there. Until you walk here, in here, and then there's all these people that are assuring you it's going to be okay. I felt like I wasn't going to make it. I, I thought I won't pull through with this alive. But a nurse came in, held my hand, and said, there are a lot of people that can't make it because they don't have survival chances, but you have 80% out of 100 chances of living, 
and I promise you, you will get through this alive. It was possible in Julian's case to remove this tumor, providing then treatment consisting of radiation as well as chemotherapy. Radiation takes six weeks, but chemotherapy and the whole treatment takes 14 months. How have you been? Okay. Good? Yeah. One, two, three. Thank you. Would you start taking off your glasses, please? Yes. We had people taking care of him medically, people taking care of him psychologically. Be strong. Oh, you are great. You know you have the best. You just, we were so, we kept saying to each other, Jeff and I, thank God we're here. Thank God we're here. I think that there is a line just really cutting you through the whole knee, and I will be beside you. Second has saved my life. But I fear that the cancer or a different type of cancer that may not be curable may come back once again and I may not survive whatever I think might be coming. I have met one kid that has just started and I just, I just thought to myself, I just cried, and in my heart, I just hoped that he would have the confidence that I had from the doctors and nurses. And I'd say, just keep going, hold on, you'll make it through this. Hi, I'm Cynthia Dale, and I'm here today for one simple reason, because I believe that children have the right to be healthy. I also believe there are a few places in the world like sick kids, but we can't do it alone. We desperately need more support to have more breakthroughs so we can save more lives. And these stories are proof that we need to have breakthroughs faster. And this is where it happens, right here in this research lab, but not without your help. So I'm here to ask you to do one simple thing to join the Sick Kids Miracle Club with a monthly gift of support. When you call or go online to join the Miracle Club for $21 a month, that's just 70 cents a day, this exclusive welcome package. It includes the story of a child who's being helped by sick kids, someone whose life depends on the care that you'll make possible. As a special member of the Sick Kids family, we'll also send you exclusive monthly donor updates with more photos and stories of children keeping you up to speed on how your donation is being spent to help save lives. And if you join right now with your credit card or checking account, we'll send you this adorable little bear. We urgently need more support, so it's our way of saying thanks for joining so quickly. But the most heartwarming part about this gift is that when you join right now, we'll give another bear, exactly like yours, to a sick child in the hospital letting that child know that someone out there cares and hopes that they get home soon. The work in our research labs can never stop, and new patients arrive at Sick Kids every single day. That's why we need ongoing support, and why regular monthly giving is simply the best way to support Sick Kids. And monthly giving costs less to process, which means that more of your money goes directly to where it's needed most. Your gift of $21 a month, that's just 70 cents a day, will help develop better treatments, buy life-saving medical equipment, and find cures for deadly childhood diseases. Miracle Club members save children's lives every single day. Joining is easy. You can call or go online. Our website has simple step-by-step -step instructions, and it's 100% secure. There really is no greater gift than the gift of life. It's what so many of the children here at Sick Kids right now are wishing for, the chance to live the life they deserve. I have AML, and that's a type of cancer, and I wish that they could find a cure for it so I could go home and play with my friends. I wish I had a new kidney, and everything would be better for me. I wish that they'd keep up the study and try and find a cure for leukemia. I wish... 
I was at the hospital. Hmm. I wish I could go home. Imagine being a child who has staying alive at the top of their wish list. This is your chance to make that wish come true. We're waiting for your call, and the kids are waiting. Please call now. And believe me when I say your donation will make a difference. Earlier, we shared with you the story of a brave little girl named Alexi. The name Alexi actually stands for fighter. In this case, that couldn't be more true. A year ago, Alexi was diagnosed with a severe and aggressive type of cancer that literally filled her abdomen. Ever since, she and her family have been fighting for her life. Here's an update. Hello. 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 Her fight against cancer has been going well, but it's far from over. Her response was remarkable. She had gone from having this huge tumor filling her whole abdomen and leading to her being in an intensive care unit to basically having no sign of cancer. That obviously was encouraging in that we knew that the cancer had responded well, but also a problem for us because we know that generally these tumors cannot be cured by chemotherapy alone. And our concern has always been that there's a few little lurking cancer cells that we can't see with our scans. We start therapy may in fact come back. And because we don't know where the cancer started, it's hard for us to know where to now focus the remainder of our treatment. So we'll be putting at least one or two additional openings in the abdomen. Through this, we'll put a little device to biopsy things. Although this family dreams of simpler days, Necessity has made them accustomed to days like today. Time together in waiting rooms, talking to a doctor about what's about to happen. Little Margaret has spent the whole first year of her life at SickKids. At this point, Alexi has finished 42 weeks of chemo. This next step, today's operation, is essential to ensuring her survival. The doctors need to find the elusive origin of her cancer. They need to pinpoint it and knock it out. If they don't find it, it's very likely that the cancer will come back and greatly lessen Alex's chances of winning this fight. Okay. Did we kiss goodbye to Dad and Mom? Did you give him a kiss? That's great. Okay. See you in a minute once I get my test. Again. Okay? okay. There's a lot riding on today's operation. After all that she's already been through, Alexi's future now depends on whether or not the origin of her cancer can be found. Despite the nervousness that this family is feeling about today's procedure, they know that Alexi is in good hands. Alexi doesn't seem nervous or afraid. She's remained brave and resolute in the face of cancer from the very beginning. This is your job here. When we get tired, then we'll have a rest. Now, I'm just going to hold back your head by signing here because I don't want you to fall over. Today is no different. She simply has no choice but to fight. Fear will not help. At four, she has a knowing in her eyes that is well beyond her years. I'm going to lay you right down here. Good girl. Good girl. Let's get comfortable here. I really do see. Um, and it's in the future. I mean, you, you have to, although there's the fear that you do have to continue um, living and believing and hoping that um, Anixi will grow up and she'll uh, continue her dance lessons and that she will um, you know, just continue to appreciate things and to um, to live every moment as we all should, and to, to just have a normal life. So, so they're just waking her up now. We put some long-acting local anesthetic in each of the incisions, and we'll keep her comfortable tonight. And if she's feeling well enough, I think she probably will. She can go home tomorrow. The operation to pinpoint the source of Alexi's cancer didn't turn up what surgeons hoped for. OK, sir, see you there. Yep, bye-bye. Bye-bye. It was the outcome they feared the most. If she has cancer again, that's 
the worst fear. I know, I know, I, you try not to pay attention to statistics or you try not to, but we, you know, know that they have less of a success if cancer is, reappe reappears a second time. They do, but there's less success. After a year here at SickKids, Carole and her family are finally going home. That part is a relief for the entire family. But without having found the origin of Alexei's cancer, the fear that it will reappear is something that they will have to live with every day. After all that she's endured and all that this mother, who loves her little girl so much, has been through, her future, Alexei's very life, remains at risk. My hopes is that um, she will remember this, but also forget. I don't know if that makes any sense. Remember it so that she lives every day fully and forget because there's a lot of things that, that are difficult. I'd take her place if I could. Okay. Hey, sweetie. How you f Not good. Doctors at SickKids spent months treating Alexei and trying desperately to rid her body of the cancer that had come back with such a vengeance. With her family by her side, Alexei fought for her life and sick kids fought with her. But in the end, it wasn't enough. Alexei lost her fight. From the moment a child is admitted to sick kids, they are embraced. And of course, the kids are true heroes. But there are other heroes too. It starts with their family, and then there are the doctors, nurses, researchers, and you. Miracle Club supporters make it all possible by funding the life-saving research and helping us buy the most urgently needed medical equipment. Last year, Miracle Club supporters bought things like this state-of-the-art diagnostic machine to detect cancer and brain diseases, especially in the early stages when the chances of curing the disease are greatest. This year, the list of urgently needed medical equipment is very long. I'm looking at it right now, and we need your help. Surgical equipment, ultrasound units, dialysis machines, machines to monitor lungs, more incubators. The list goes on. It is simple. We buy real things with your hard-earned money and see real results. The kind of results that make miracles happen. When you call or go online to join the Miracle Club for $21 a month, that's just 70 cents a day. We'll send you this exclusive welcome package. It includes the story of a child who's being helped by sick kids, someone whose life depends on the care that you'll make possible. As a special member of the sick kids family, we'll also send you exclusive monthly donor updates with more photos and stories of children, keeping you up to speed on how your donation is being spent to help save lives. Every penny counts, and you can trust sick kids to spend your donation wisely. We take your support very seriously, and we're accountable to you. And if you join right now with your credit card or checking account, we'll send you this adorable little bear. We urgently need more support, so it's our way of saying thanks for joining so quickly. But the most heartwarming part about this gift is that when you join right now, we'll give another bear, exactly like yours, to a sick child in the hospital 
letting that child know that someone out there cares and hopes that they get home soon. Your gift of $21 a month, that's just 70 cents a day, will help develop better treatments, buy life-saving medical equipment, and find cures for deadly childhood diseases. Miracle Club members save children's lives every single day. Joining is easy. You can call or go online. Our website has simple step-by-step -step instructions and it's 100% secure. And if in the future your circumstances change, you can decrease, pause, stop, or even increase your donation at any time. But right now, we need your help. It's definitely a miracle that I'm here today. And kids is the miracle. There's not a question about it that I would not be here if it weren't for them. We can't give enough for what we got from that hospital. We love the hospital. This hospital is the most important hospital for all the kids in Canada, for sure. It is an important institution, so important that we have to keep her at any cost. You have the power to save lives. Please use that power. Pick up the phone or go online. Our operators are standing by and our website is ready. It's easy and fast and after you'll feel great knowing that each month and every day, all year long, you'll be there for sick children, helping them survive, helping them get home and back to life. There's a moment that every parent dreads, and it's finding out that your child is sick. I know because I'm a parent myself. But for this mother, when that dreadful moment came, it was more like a nightmare. And no one could have prepared her for the worst word any parent could hear. Cancer. Megan was beautiful right from the start. Joyous child very happy. Very angelic, actually. Right from the start, people would say there was this calmness and this beauty in her that um, was distinguishable. She had this unbelievable connection to human beings, to animals, to life. She'd have squirrels in the backyard come up and sit on her lap. She, at a very young age, knew when little kids were upset about something and she'd just look after them. She just had this way about her. And her nickname by her grandparents was Angel. Megan was the angel in the school play. And she certainly held that role very naturally. She was just sort of stood on the stage and looked after the people around her. And everybody kept remarking on, she's so angelic. She's just really like a real little angel. September, she was four years old. She started complaining of headaches. So we took her to the doctor and there just seemed to be no signs that he was worried about. By mid-November, she had a head turn. And I thought I couldn't have Christmas without getting to the bottom of it. I woke up one morning and just called my sister who used to work at the sick kids hospital. And she met me down there, and that day was the longest day of my life. Megan was having some walking difficulty when she was diagnosed. Uh, she was very unsteady. Um, and so this is certainly one of the symptoms which triggers the uh, investigation, the CT scan and the MRI scan she had. I knew something was horrible, horribly wrong, and they weren't... Um, 
you weren't giving me the results until nighttime. Um, a dear doctor who has children himself um, and knew he was struggling trying to tell us. And when we walked in, he said, it's the worst kind of brain tumor you can have. So I, I remember precisely the, the discussion uh, and Denise's reaction. Mm. Uh, very appropriately was devastated, but uh, couldn't even support uh, uh, what she was hearing, and she fainted several times. And he said, because the, the tumor was in the brain, in the stem, there's no cure for brain stem glioma. When it's in the stem, they can't operate in that area. So we couldn't take it out. It, it is the worst diagnosis as a parent that you can be given. Um, but we were determined to fight. Megan started within days. She started radiation. Um, radiation, which is uh, the, the backbone of the treatment for all this uh, condition. She was absolutely fantastic, very cooperative, a clear understanding of why she was here and that uh, the quickest he was done, the quickest she was out. On the last day of her treatment, they held a little party for Megan, where they made her a little graduation hat and uh, a beautiful cake and had a little present for her to congratulate her that she had made it through all of her treatments. She was um, also trusting and she said, you know, this is my destiny. Uh, just, uh, she, she was fighting, but she knew, and, and she was, uh, as, uh, as you say, many children are doing, uh, she was uh, protecting her parents, especially her mom. It was just before her fifth birthday, um, the end of May, her headache started to come back, and she was losing energy. And she wanted just to be with her family and the animals that she loved. And bit by bit, um, she just started to lose a bit of energy. Then, in the end, um, we wanted her to be here in the home if she could. The last night, um, she was struggling quite a bit, and I didn't want her to struggle. So after uh, a couple of hours, I, I called 911. She was struggling, but she was peaceful. And she was trying to comfort me because I was crying. And she kept putting her hand on my head, saying, it's OK, Mommy. And the ambulance fell up. Um, as we were carrying her down the stairs, said, put Megan's head up. and have her say goodbye to her home. It was raining. It was so symbolic that morning. The rain was pouring down. And she was so peaceful in that ambulance driving down. And we went into sick kids and the whole family was around her. When you're waiting for your child's last breath, you're waiting, you're watching. It is something that I think I can only hope few human beings, few parents ever, ever have to witness and experience. And when that child takes that last breath, it is a moment that's indescribable. I took her in my arms and I felt it was time for me to thank Megan for so many lives she touched. So I just said thank you, Megan, for being the most wonderful little girl. And I kept telling her, you have changed so many people's lives. You've touched more people than you know. And I did tell her I'd never say goodbye. And I thought, how can any parent ever hug their child goodbye? 
No one should have to suffer that moment. Nobody should have to ever walk away from their child. To lose a child so young, it just doesn't make any sense. And I can't even imagine what Megan's mom has been through. But I know if she could just have one wish, if something good could come out of all this, it would be to do everything in our power to make sure other children don't suffer. And other parents never have to experience that kind of pain. Please help us deliver that gift to Megan's mom and every parent and child who needs sick kids. We can't bring Megan back, but we can help other children who need us now. Please call today with your support for sick kids. When you call or go online to join the Miracle Club for $21 a month, that's just 70 cents a day, we'll send you this exclusive welcome package. It includes the story of a child who's being helped by sick kids, someone whose life depends on the care that you'll make possible. As a special member of the Sick Kids family, we'll also send you exclusive monthly donor updates with more photos and stories of children, keeping you up to speed on how your donation is being spent to help save lives. And if you join right now with your credit card or checking account, we'll send you this adorable little bear. We urgently need more support, so it's our way of saying thanks for joining so quickly. But the most heartwarming part about this gift is that when you join right now, you'll give another bear, exactly like yours, to a sick child in the hospital, letting that child know that someone out there cares and hopes that they get home soon. The work in our research labs can never stop, and new patients arrive at sick kids every single day. That's why we need your ongoing support, and why regular monthly giving is simply the best way to support sick kids. And monthly giving costs less to process, which means that more of your money goes directly to where it's needed most. Your gift of $21 a month, that's just 70 cents a day, will help develop better treatments, buy life-saving medical equipment, and find cures for deadly childhood diseases. Miracle Club members save children's lives every single day. Joining is easy. You can call or go online. Our website has simple step-by-step -step instructions, and it's 100% secure. I know that a hospital is run on government funding alone, that it needs the support of people uh, like me, like anybody, that can make any kind of a donation. And that's the kind of money that's there to support the research and, and all the ongoing things that they do. So it makes me feel great. I mean, it's just something that it's important to me, and I've always I've done it for as long as I can remember, and intend to continue. I uh, truly believe that it's important to support the work of the kids because I've been blessed with a very healthy child and from my perspective it's insurance for the future to ensure that we have the best possible quality care should anything happen to her or any other child for that matter. It's very important to me that I know that my donation goes to sick kids to help save children's lives. It's never easy when a child gets sick. They get the flu or a cold. They depend on the grown-ups in their life to heal them. And it's a great feeling when you see them back to their old self again. But for many here at Sick Kids, they have much more than the flu. And some of them never get back on their feet again. The fact is, these kids are depending on us. They need a bigger circle of care, the biggest they can get to help them get better. When you pick up that phone, you will save lives. It's that simple. And it could be one of the most significant things you'll ever do. This is a story about bravery. It's about two parents, Kevin and Catherine, whose dream of having a baby was torn apart when they found out that their baby girl was sick very sick. Faced with the most devastating news of their life, Kevin and Catherine made the choice to never give up and to give their baby a chance at life and the best life possible for as long as possible. And it's about a little girl, Kevin and Catherine's daughter, a girl with a fight and determination 
that will astound you. What's on your paper? Who's on there? Pooh Bear? Yeah. Bryce was born with a badly deformed heart. It simply doesn't work. And because of that, the blood and oxygen her body needs to keep her alive is severely lacking. Bryce has a strength and resolve that keeps her going. But what she doesn't realize is that it won't be enough to save her. This precious little girl needs a new heart. Today, daily injections keep her alive, but they bruise her tiny body. Still, her incredible spirit remains astonishingly undaunted. Good girl. Going. Bryce also has trouble keeping food down. Catherine feeds her through a tube, just one of the many challenges this family faces together. A sense of humor is key. Oh, yeah, you can have that though, thank you. Are you enjoying that? I would describe Bryce as a, a very happy little girl unaware that she has a heart that should be slowing her down. She wants to get up and go. She's impatient. <laughs> She's stubborn. She's ready to go see what's out there. And she's doing it. No one knows when a new heart will become available, so regular visits to sick kids are vital. Yeah, her liver is much better. Yeah. Oh, it's it's way better. Sure. Right now, Bryce needs a heart transplant. Bryce's heart disease is so severe that there's not a lot we can do to fix it. Her heart is not able to pump what her body requires in blood and oxygen to all of her organs. So I really hope that during this window of stability that we will get the opportunity to have a donor organ for her such that she will have the best outcome that's possible for her. My biggest fear is that uh, she's not gonna make it through the, the surgery. That's my biggest fear. I think we'll hurt. Um, and hopefully sooner than later. Um, but I fear that, you know, she doesn't do things the way that everyone else does them and that she's not gonna make it. Surprising to everyone, a few short weeks later, a compatible heart is available for Bryce and it's on its way. Her big day is here. And you can just imagine what Kevin and Catherine must be feeling. Her uh, birthday is a week today. Um, so I think for the next 60 years for us, it'll be a, a special week. Two occasions. Kind of a, I guess a bit of a rebirth with a new heart at her birthday, because she wasn't supposed to be here now. But she is. It's supposed to be a, a happy moment, but I'll wait till the doctor comes out. <laughs> when he says that uh, she's okay and waiting for us in the ICU, then it'll be happy. With Bryce's new heart and root, Dr. Van Arsdale head of cardiovascular surgery, begins to prepare himself. He begins to focus on the enormous task of the seven hour procedure ahead of him. And although he's done this many times, he knows that every patient is different and anything can happen. It's a staged concern that you go through. I mean, the biggest picture is, is the new heart that you're going to implant work well. And happily, the vast majority of them do, but you don't really know until you to beat and you give you load the heart and give it a chance to work on its own okay, sir. finally the new heart arrives from its long journey to help a little girl live 
The moment of truth is here. If successful, Bryce may live another 10 years before needing another heart. If something goes wrong, however, it's a tense time. The new heart is kept on ice until Bryce is ready to receive it. Once in, it should start beating on its own. And then, like the miracle that she is, Bryce's new heart starts to beat. A second chance at life has just begun. That's good. This is the moment that doctors look forward to. So they were done. Everything has actually gone very well. I'm very pleased. The new heart started functioning right away. Mm -hmm. But she's the heart lung machine probably a good 30, 35 minutes now. It's separated from her. But right now, she's done as well as she could possibly have done. All right. I can't imagine being anywhere else than sick kids. I know that we were put there for very special reasons. There are never going to be any words that we can say that would express our gratitude, and it's so deep. And um, unless you've been through it, you can, it's, it's, it's so hard to not be able to tell people and show people and give back to people um, what they've given to you. At last, mom and dad get a first glimpse of their baby in recovery. Baby girl. This is the moment that they have dreamt of for so long. Bryce has a second chance at life now. They all get a second chance now. She is a magical child. She's got a spirit that surpasses her size, that's for sure. And she's touching lives, and she's going to continue to do that. Um, she just has a warm, just a warm spirit. And I think um, she has a lot to show the world about life, and uh, she's going to be doing it for a long time. There are no words to express the sorrow felt throughout Sick Kids when a child is lost. Sick Kids works tirelessly to save every child that is admitted to the hospital. We give it everything we've got. But as long as children are dying, we need to work harder and faster to find ways to beat deadly childhood diseases. And that means we need more support. No parent should ever have to say goodbye to their child. This really is your chance to be a hero. Please join our Miracle Club right now. When you call or go online to join the Miracle Club for $21 a month, that's just 70 cents a day, we'll send you this exclusive welcome package. It includes the story of a child who's being helped by sick kids, someone whose life depends on the care that you'll make possible. As a special member of the Sick Kids family, we'll also send you exclusive monthly donor updates with more photos and stories of children, keeping you up to speed on how your donation is being spent to help save lives. And if you join right now with your credit card or checking account, we'll send you this adorable little bear. We urgently need more support, so it's our way of saying thanks for joining so quickly. But the most hard part about this gift is that when you join right now, we'll give another bear, exactly like yours, to a sick child in the hospital 
letting that child know that someone out there cares and hopes that they get home soon. Your gift of $21 a month, that's just 70 cents a day, will help develop better treatments, buy life-saving medical equipment, and find cures for deadly childhood diseases. Miracle Club members save children's lives every single day. Joining is easy. You can call or go online. Our website has simple step-by-step -step instructions and it's 100% secure. If you believe, as I do, that we need to stay the course in the fight against childhood diseases, and if you believe in these children and that every child deserves to be healthy, then please call with your support today for the children you've just seen and the others whose lives will be senselessly cut short if we do nothing. Please make that life-saving call right now. We've talked a lot about heroes today. We've seen what it means for children who battle the most deadly diseases. And we've talked a lot about the remarkable things that can happen when people who care come together to save lives. But perhaps the greatest triumph of all is in that moment when after months and sometimes years of treatment, a child walks through these doors for a second time, this time on their way home. You can make that happen. And today is your chance, the chance to do something significant through the simple and heroic act of giving. It's that easy. And there are children fighting to stay alive right now. Thank you for watching, and please, call now. Megan was beautiful right from the start. And her nickname by her grandparents was Angel. I would describe Bryce as a, a very happy little girl, unaware that she has a heart that should be slowing her down. She is a magical child. She's got a spirit that surpasses her size, that's for sure. And I think um, she has a lot to show the world about life. You know, they see heroes come in all shapes and sizes. When I saw the name that Alexi meant fighter, it couldn't have been a more appropriate name. I'd take her place if I could.